Hello, everybody. Uh, this is Thomas. I am the creator of Ascension Con. This is a fan run convention for fans by fans of Mage Ascension. It's a free con. Uh, this is the first day, uh, a weekend for uh, this convention. And thank you for showing up. Thank you for all the, the wonderful guests here. But uh, this is the Art of Mage. Enjoy yourself. I'm going to mute out. Thank you for everybody. Thank you, uh, James, Mark, Echo, Sados, Rich, especially Terry for helping me out with this. I appreciate it. James Thanks. has been Thank the you. real hero of that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> James Thank you to Rich Thomas for creating the company that allows everyone to still enjoy the games. <laughs> yes. Um, so this is going to be conducted as a slideshow. James should be, uh, or someone will be doing a screen share once we bring that up, um, just a, in terms of brief introductions. Um, uh, Mark, who was part of the history of Mage or the Mage Rush Respective uh, broadcast, whatever you want to call it from yesterday, uh, worked under the name Mark Jackson, did some of the most iconic images for Mage. Um, my process of going through Mark's work has been, oh, Mark did that. Oh, Mark did that. Uh, oh, Mark did that one, one too. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we are also joined by uh, Echo Chernick, who previously went by, pardon me, fill in the blank here, Echo? It's Jay McKinney. Yes. Um, and did uh, has also a distinctive style that with... Uh, uh, despite most of it being black and white, still brings across the, the jubilancy of, of Echo's current work. Um, all the information to the artists in their current portfolios we will include with show notes once this goes out. Uh, Echo did a wonderful series of tarot-like illustrations for each of the traditions. Um, uh, Rich Thomas is the uh, served as... Uh, Rich, how about I, I just let you describe what your uh, work in <laughs> yeah. the art and creative before I just jam all your titles together. <laughs> Uh, well, I mean, when I was at White Wolf, uh, I was the art director for Mage uh, when we first started, Mage First Edition. And then um, later on, continued to art direct uh, on and off uh, myself, but then I ran a department and other people were the art directors for the ensuing Mage line. And then uh, 7,000 years later, um, <laughs> found an Onyx path and uh, started working with uh, Phil uh, to do the uh, Mage 20th Anniversary Edition and had the extreme thrill of art directing that as well. Rich, Rich is also the creator of all of the iconic images, the, the, the clan and tradition and all of, the, all of those symbols that people have been tattooing themselves with for the last 29 years of Rich's work. Scaring and, the hell out of me at conventions coming up and showing <laughs> me where they put them on their bodies. <laughs> Thought he was mooning me. He was just showing me his La Sombra tattoo. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, you, now it all makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> and, and a special thanks for you choosing alchemical symbols for the inspiration for Mage because it makes it much easier to find lookalike illustrations that are out of copyright. So thank you so much for that choice. Absolutely. <laughs> um, so I think the way this is going to be done is Echo will be sharing Echo's screen and um, uh, the panel will have the opportunity to just uh, talk about some of the uh, distinctive pieces that were part of the art of mage. Okay, let's see if we can get on here now. Oh, all right. So what do you want me, you want me to just uh, start going through them and you guys can stop me when you want to talk about something? That would be from the first one would be Janet. Uh, how do you pronounce her last name? Uh, Alicia, oh, I think. Alicia. Alicia. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's from uh, from Mage First Edition and was yep. was one of the um, one of the kind of signature not tradition signature, but one of the I I, I when I first Iconic. got a look at it, I was like, that's that's one of the most one of the best uh, and and uh, most iconic images in that book. So I had stuck that into the art of Mage as well. I love Janet's work. So I'm yes, just trying to make sure it's absolutely even. gorgeous. There, now we can see them. <laughs> you just John tell me when to stop. John Cobb. <laughs> John, Cobb. Yeah, John Cobb. It's funny. John's work is John's work is one of those things that people either love it or hate it. I love it. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, I, absolutely. He's always captured this. Uh, 
weirdness for whichever line it was that he worked on. I mean, his 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 work's most iconic in Wraith, but uh, but I, I'm pretty sure he worked on all of the lines, or at least all of the World of Darkness I, lines. After a certain after a certain time, I uh, I started getting him, even if it was just a few pieces. I'd get him to do it as good luck. <laughs> yeah, he, was, he was my good luck charm artist to get in on, on all the all the world darkness stuff i think yeah, i even threw crazy. Him stuff in once he didn't he didn't belong in. but he's he, the thing i was always amazed with him was that his the things that he likes to put into his art he likes to put into all of his art and so you see these motifs and these these uh these little swirls and little things like that that occur all in everything he does and um and like I mean, and, it, and he, he would deliver color stuff to us, and it was still absolutely John Cobb art. Like you could just recognize it immediately. So I think he's a, I think he has a true artistic vision because whatever's going on there, he's got the marks that he wants to show uh, what what mm -hmm. it looks like. Yeah, he also did the uh, uh, the the suite of dynamism and the Nefandic suite in uh, the uh, the the mm -hmm. Mage Tarot Tarot deck. Yeah, and he's he's been with. I don't remember if he's got stuff in Vampire First Edition, but I know that he's got some of the more distinct uh, images, as does Rich, for that matter, in Werewolf First Edition. Right. Yeah, I, I think I, I started with I started working with John in Werewolf, and uh, and then we just kept going. I think probably my favorite stuff of his was in Wraith because it seemed like it was yeah. the perfect combination of of imagery and uh, subject matter. Love his stuff, by the way. It's really awesome, mm -hmm. especially in Rafe. I, I yeah. agree. And he's a sweetheart to work with. Absolutely <laughs> wonderful. And Ken Meyer back there, we had a piece from Ken Meyer. Uh, Ken Meyer yeah, Jr. Yeah, this is Ken on, Meyer. Uh, on, that's from Book of Secrets, uh, the Mage 20 line. And Ken is also one of those iconic World of Darkness. I mean, his I, I, I always see Ken's work and I think Vampire, especially Vampire 2nd Edition uh, sure. and Player's sure. Guide to the Sabbat or just when when I first joined White Wolf and I, I got basically all of the books that White Wolf had put out at that time. And I was paging through Player's Guide to the Sabbat at like two or three o'clock in the morning, you know, in this room full of boxes of, because I had just moved down and I hadn't unpacked my stuff yet and I couldn't sleep. And I'm like paging through it. And I come to this image of a screaming guy tied upside down while these vampires like ah, underneath him and this this pouring blood and I was like ah! <laughs> <laughs> that'll wake you up <laughs> it did kept me up too <laughs> and then there's the 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 less the less gruesome but but uh equally disturbing if not more disturbing um image in the same book of the the vampiric jester and the little boy who's just been turned into a vampire and that was just like Gah, fuck man this yeah. Yeah. He's, he's also an awesome guy and his art is fantastic and i'm glad he's still working yeah he's um, awesome uh, <laughs> his stuff definitely has a it has it packs a punch a every once in a while i run into him so at a convention or something so right you had made mention that John Cobb did the uh, Nefondic suit, the uh, the suit of primordialism in the tarot. How did you pick the illustrators for that project? Uh, it's by whom seemed to be appropriate for it. Uh, I knew we we wanted to get. I mean, Josh was doing a series of tarot of the Major Arcana um, on the back of each of the of the books, so we knew we had Josh for the Major Arcana. And he needed to fill them out. Then what do we do for the suits? We couldn't expect like if we had had the, our druthers, Josh would have done the whole thing. Um, but that that was a, he is he's never been a fast uh, uh, worker as an artist, and so he probably would still have been working on finishing up the tarot uh, set if uh, if we had done that. So we had to look for who could do different things. And there's uh, Larry McDougal who uh, was another one of them. Uh, but we basically looked at what what styles felt right for the particular, um, uh, you know, I want to say sect, but th that probably has a loaded term in, in World of Darkness. But basically, faction. whichever group, yeah, faction, thank you. Whichever group was being illustrated, uh, try to get the people who most could deliver that. So Nefandi, definitely John, um, uh, John Cobb, and then um, Larry was Marauders? Yeah, Marauders, he, yeah. suit of dynamism. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and that was, uh, at, at the time, actually, his stuff has become more and more delicate and beautiful and lovely uh, 
as time has gone by, he was very, he was very much hard blacks and whites uh, when we first started working together. In fact, I think he, I think Larry McDougall was the illustrator for Clan Book Bruja, um, the very first, mm. the very first Clan Book of that, because his stuff was so dynamically uh, strong, just these heavy blacks and whites. And so uh, he seemed, he seemed to make sense for Marauders. Yeah, he also had. Uh one of the iconic illustrations for me or more, more memorable ones for me in werewolf first edition, because it's like this, this werewolf and I, I, uh, his, not his, but what's the, what's the, uh, the, the, the kind of caveman wolf man for, Glabro? um, Glabro. Yeah. This Glabro glaring down at the ground with his hands in his pockets in the background. There's this, there's, there's this graffiti that says, join the worm puppy. <laughs> and, that, and it says Duke <laughs> underneath it. And I was just like, Duke. Cool. You know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, let's go back a few because we've got Daryl Elliott. Uh, is that Daryl Elliott? We're, we're right Daryl. Daryl Elliott. Always... Daryl Elliott. Yeah. Sorry. I've always loved his work. Uh, I love all the work, but like, his work always answered me. Uh, people the one with the guy playing with the castle. Um, oh, the castle one? Mm -hmm. Yeah. He did a lot to bring a sense of wonder to Mage for the, in the first edition. Because um, mm -hmm. again, we we didn't go and say, "Look, we need a uh, you know find a castle and then like illustrate it with a guy flying over it." And that wasn't how I, I was art directing then, or, or ever preferred art direct. It was more, "Here's the themes. Here's what we're looking for. Here's how many we need you to do. Send us some sketches." And well, he just he just completely like everything that came in was just, "Oh my god, that's amazing!" In fact, I think he actually I think he walked them in. I think because he was I think he was in Atlanta at the time. That's always the best oh. way to work, too, is the way you art direct is, uh, is to just give freedom to the artist. You, you inspire the best work from everyone, I think. I've never really liked the idea that I'm a puppet master controlling an artist's hands. Like, that kind of art direction is I, – I didn't, I didn't like it when I was freelancing, and I certainly don't think it produces the best stuff. I'd rather give the information and say, what can you do with this? I think it I think I think you allowed us all to flourish, and I can't thank you enough for having done that, Rich. Well, thank you, Mark. Absolutely. What What is this piece here? It says, uh, "What's this? Estes Traditions." Wow, my um, blanket. What is? Oh, let me, I've I've got the book. Um, Was that the guy that, in Guide to Traditions? Yeah, that's from Guide to the Traditions. I'm trying. Yeah. He he was after my time, so I had John? to look up. Um, when I when I was putting the art of mage together, I was going through the uh, the the revised uh, era as well, because and, and having right. in some cases to learn who the artists were, because I had no idea. Yeah, this looks like it says ninety nine. John Estes, yeah, John Estes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's good stuff. Yeah, I like it. I think didn't he do uh, vampire? Uh, um, I seem to remember his stuff in in Vampire Bill. Oh yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, that, and that's the thing about it as well. Like when we started, you know, I, mean, I mean, we were talking about, hey, remember when Cobb was on this and then we put him on that and then we put this. That's really how we worked. If you had a style that or you could tweak your style a little bit to go into each of the lines, it was it was cool to do it. We we had some people who just would only work on one line or who were only right for one line, but others had flexibility and could work almost anywhere. I think we probably threw you into just about everything, Mark. The only thing I, I never did uh, work for was uh, Ray. Ah, okay. I remember Dancy used to use to uh, see my questions and uh, he'd sort of point and shake his head sometimes. I like, never had anything for me. Um, yeah. Uh, but I mean, that's fine. I mean, you guys kept me busy. I, I didn't know that. I don't mind that. Well, but, yeah, I would love to. Okay. Yeah, the thing about yeah, it was. To have tried I don't think you were languishing. <laughs> if I no. remember right. <laughs> no. We loved your work so much, and as, and again, it it it's, it comes down to a lot of it. Also, how great it is when it's enjoyable to work with people, uh, artists who are who are who are uh, fun and uh, professional and nice, and it's just great to have that kind of experience. It it's, goes across the board. I think it shows up in the artwork too. Yeah, yeah. I'm in Foss right now. Langdon we, we Foss. Over you, Echo. <laughs> we, we skipped, I skipped over me. you back there. I skipped me. <laughs> Let's talk about don't, everyone else. Don't hide your bush, <laughs> your, your light under a bushel, Echo. Yes. <laughs> we'll get there. Let's go through everyone else first, then we'll get to us since we're here. Okay. Actually here. Yeah, I mean, you did one of one of my personal all-time all favorite mage illustrations. So. All right. You want me to go back to me? Yes, please. 
That's and, a mystery. And just a note for listeners and viewers, there are two Art of Mage books that have been released. Uh, one was uh, the first 20 years and one was 20th and beyond the Art of Mage uh, that was released as part of the M20 line. Uh, the first book kind of focuses on mage and its art. The second one is interesting in that it is very much a celebration of the union between mage and the artist. Uh, it does a good job of giving you all the web pages for all of the artists, as well as just a complete index of everyone who's pretty well worked on mage. And that is a, a terribly useful resource. If you see anything or there's a style and you want to see, hey, I want to see more of this person's work, the, uh, the art of mage, uh, the M20 edition is quite good for that. And it's also cheap and available, POD inexpensively. Hmm. Thank, Thank you. you. So Remember yeah, you own this one, Phil. Yeah, I yeah I, I own that one. You, 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 that's also you, you and uh, Laz had silk screened that oh, on yeah. the T-shirt for me. That's, uh, that's right. Yeah, yes, I forgot edition. that. Yeah, so. I can the hear the music screen. when I see this one. I remember this. I I can hear. Mm -hmm. I always hear the music when I see this. Nice. Yeah. And, and I was playing one. with all different mediums. This one I think I, I did on scratch board and then I used the zip tone over it. Right. Um, this one is on zip tone on Bristol, I think. I'm sure. Absol absolutely, absolutely lovely for that and uh, and a nightmare for these uh, the new the, the editions that are on print on demand. Uh, the zip tone is a killer. The zip tone, what, who yeah. that is? <laughs> ah. <laughs> yeah. This is the question oh. for you. Um, ah, yeah. Did you use models for these um, illustrations? <laughs> yes, I always use models one. for my art. So, um, do you I, ever, um, yeah. Do you, do you ever uh, go come up to the person that modeled for you and you're like, hey, I, I used you for a book? Absolutely. Actually, uh, these, uh, the, the mage and wraith, uh, a lot of the work I did for White Wolf was in the very first days of my career. Uh, so I didn't have a lot of money and I was living in New York. So all of the, a lot of the models are friends of mine or fellow gamers that I gamed with or random mm -hmm. people on the street that I'd be like, hey, <laughs> you want to pose for me? You there. I mean, <laughs> I, as a woman, I think I got away with that better than when my husband did it. They just kind of went, Ugh. but when I did it, they were like, oh, okay. <laughs> so, but I, I use um, I do, I do use a lot of models nowadays. I hire models usually. Um, although I still I still use friends, um, depending what I need for the piece too. Sure. Uh, but yeah, so or or Laz because Laz is the uh, is the model for the um, for the verbena in in twenty M twenty. Yeah, he's in he's in a lot of the pieces too. I have other pieces that I have not such good pictures of that I took of the originals yesterday because they're really crummy pictures, but. I'm trying to find one with Laz. I don't think I have one with Laz. It was weird going through these because I was like, it, it was like um, a blast of the past because I was like, wow. Mm -hmm. I remember doing all these. They were such an integral part of our life at the time. It was just so everything, you know, it was living, living, uh, LARPing and, and, you know, going out there and, and experiencing New York City because, we, you know, we were, li we were a young couple That's living great. in New York City. Um, and it's so much diversity there and it's just awesome going to the museums being inspired by like everything um it's just such a vibrant part time you know time as an illustrator so when i was experimenting you'll see just all different types of experimentation in my pieces and yeah as far as the zip tone i was thinking um you look at the art of mage and you look at nowadays a lot of the work that's out there and i have to remember all a lot of this is most of it is is traditional as opposed to digital work nowadays mm -hmm. Um, so it has a completely different aesthetic. It's working digitally versus working traditionally. It's not that it's easier. It's just different. It allows you to be a lot smoother and to make a lot more mistakes and stuff. Right. So you're working traditionally. It's one of the things I like about it. <laughs> yeah. Well, just, so just fix the layer. That's all. <laughs> And that has its good parts, but it also, I, mean, I work digitally and traditionally even nowadays. Um, right. And the pieces I'm working on now, sometimes I'll do them in pen and ink, sometimes I'll do them in oil, sometimes I'll do them traditional, digitally, sometimes I'll do them, you know, in, di in different, uh, but these are all traditional, so. The, that, um, that. Go ahead, Phil. Oh, just that, the one that's on screen right now was, was the image, uh, and I, I don't remember if it was the first one that I saw of the, of the Fragile Path ones, or... Mm -hmm. If it, but that was the one that caught my eye. I was like, "Holy shit, this person gets it," because <laughs> it's hard to read on the screen. But uh, Echo had put uh, descriptions from tarot cards onto some of the images, 
had used, uh, as, as she was saying yesterday, you know, Art Nouveau techniques, uh, and not Art Nouveau, rather, uh, um, Art, uh, yeah, Art Nouveau um, techniques, yeah. and the way that yeah. she was playing with space, negative space, composition, and so forth, like the way the hands go up through the two frames and the fingers go off there, and I, I just completely fell in love with that, and I was like, to Rich, I'm like, I don't know who this person is, but I want them like on like every mage book ever. <laughs> <laughs> I do, I do remember you saying that. I think you called me the first time, and you're like, hi, and I'm so glad to meet you. I want you on like every mage book ever, and I was like, whoa. That'd be, that'd be fair, not to take anything away from Echo, because it was, it was absolutely true. Um, like you, you can Phil see... tended to say that a lot about artists. <laughs> this is this is my more of my modern work, and you can, oh, see, yeah. really nice. you can see the roots here of, of right. where yep. I started in '95 or so, and where I am now with the Art Nouveau. Um, but you can definitely see this is where a lot in Mage. It was important because this is where I explored a lot of my style and where I figured out right. my style and where I wanted to break the borders and where I wanted to, you know, in how to integrate text and everything. And so I've, I've you can see it through my work, but it really did start in Mage, and I really did use all of uh, Mage to explore the style and to really learn who I was as an artist. So, so that was kind of important. Satyrus, when you were writing books, were you also responsible for producing art notes or was that done separately? Like what was the conversation like in the olden days, for lack of a better term, between the person composing the text and the person uh, choosing or commissioning the art? It went back and forth. Uh, when I first started, it was just, you know, Rich did the uh, Rich did all of the art direction and just told the artists we need this stuff. And then, I think it was late '93, Rich began uh, saying, you know, if you have any art notes. Basically, what would happen at that point, because this is long before you could scan art in and then send it in over the internet, is the artist would send in or you know, like Daryl um, walk in the art, and then when uh, when most or all of the art for book was in, uh, Rich would page whatever art director, or rather a uh, line developer was in charge of the book that came in and said, hey, you know, your uh, your stuff is in. And you get this, this huge pile. Of, I talk about this a bit in The Art of Mage. But you get this huge pile of artwork and go here, you know, set, sort this out to, to where it fits the text. And uh, we began integrating text and art more uh, when Larry Snelly joined the uh, the team because Larry had mm -hmm. worked with uh, Lawrence Snelly um, because uh, Lawrence had worked with Dark Horse and he brought in uh, the idea of integrating art and text more. So we began doing more and more the uh, the uh, the art director or the, the the line developer would put together the art notes generally trying to keep it loose but this is one of the reasons i like working with the artist personally as much as possible is because i would suit the art notes to the artist style and i would as as mark and echo know i'd go whenever possible to the artist and go how would you prefer the art notes what's most helpful for you and then uh we would you know hash out methodology depending on if we if we could which we often didn't have the luxury of saying which artist would be on which book because we were putting out eight books per line per year uh, which was insane yeah. uh, <laughs> uh, also something that rich did before i joined uh was rich had an overall one page i think it was style sheet for the individual lines in which i don't i don't know if it was the the line developer who did those the mage one was done when i joined uh, but that was like one page of this is what this is what you know vampire werewolf whatever this is the aesthetic we're trying to get yeah that was me this is what we oh okay. go ahead go ahead rich i mean you put those together I, no i said that was me I, I at least for the at least for the big five the first five that was uh putting those together so that i mean this is how we informed the developers this is what the kind of art we're going to get this is the mood we're going for visually um and so they could work with that uh and and you know most of most of them did or they they i mean we had a couple of developers who didn't care so much certainly not, uh, not as much as, as phil cared so um so it was it was an evolving sort of uh, sort of process on how to do it but as as you mentioned i think one of the reasons we got to the point where we had to be like this should illustrate something on this page directly, you know, pull a paragraph from this page and tell us this is what's going to go there was because we were doing so many books and like uh, Larry Snelly, I mean, he was not just doing mage or uh, he was splitting 
the what the the, the, the big no, he's splitting mage and werewolf and a, and, a, and a couple of other game lines with Aileen. So yeah, it was, you know, the, the, between the two of them, I think they had probably six lines. They were art directed. Yeah, I think you were still art directed. <laughs> There's a story behind that one, but um, well, Larry took but, over Vampire for a while, and then uh, with the uh, uh, re revised edition or third edition, uh, I came back on and worked with Justin. Yeah, Larry did the um, Kindred of East, which I think is one of the most beautiful right. books, uh, other than mm. the Book of Nod that White Wolf ever produced and in, un, under any uh, under, under any imprint or ownership uh, that the books are gorgeous. Um, also, that's something Rich deserves credit for the, the iconic look that the World of Darkness has always had because of course, you know, he's <laughs> been the art director. Uh, and so that thing which was really revolutionary in 90s game art in general is that's Rich. Well, I mean, we, you know, it was a it was one page of this is what it should feel like, and then all the artists ran with that, and that's really where the magic happened. I think um, it's 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 the, these layers of imagery. Uh, when we first started talking to people in the computer game industry uh, who did art direction, they the first thing they said to me was, "Why do you get so many different artists that you're not having? You don't have a coherent vision." And I said, "Well, it is a coherent vision for people who play RPGs." Uh, John Cobb's art is going to appeal to somebody and that's just going to be like this, this, this is how I see this world of darkness. Another person is going to be Echo, another person is going to be Mark and they're going to be the things. And so there, if you just have one visual style that's for an entire game line for tabletop RPGs, you're not reaching as many people as you could. It's the same issue with Magic uh, the Gathering where the original set was so diverse in visual styles that it could appeal to anybody. Something, something was going to be there that you were going to go, oh, now I get it. Um, I think it gives the feeling. You, you, sorry, go ahead. No, you go ahead. I was just going to say, I think it gives the feeling of looking at the universe through so many different eyes because all the artists see it differently. Yeah. So. I, I, I was talking, we, we just did a, a, a virtual con a couple of weeks ago and I was on an art panel with, with some of the artists we're using now. And, uh, and, um, they're pretty. They're they're they're, relative, they're not massively experienced. There there are a lot of people getting started in art, and uh, and then a little more. You know, have a few years under their belts. And uh, the idea that their art is the window to the world. Like these pieces of art are windows to the world, and and how you see them um, is going to come is going to be filtered by how you see things and, and what what you know what gets you excited looking at something. Um, what inspires you? It's something I thought of, Echo, when you uh, when you mentioned looking through the different worlds. Is a piece that you did uh, looking at the uh, the world through different Jeff eyes. Uh, yeah, this was this was a piece Echo did for the Book of Worlds, which was one of the more um, I as I I seem to recall Echo saying something like, "I'm going to kill you for this." <laughs> That's nice. I'm stopping sharing so you can see it. Phil, I don't know how you can. This, you, can we get Phil on there? Can we make Phil big? Yeah, hold on. Hey, Echo, I'm sorry that I interrupted you during your, your talk, I, I, but I love the, the Art Nouveau style that you had in your, your painting. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. Just, oh, yeah, this piece. I remember this piece. Yeah, this was, th this was around the time that we were doing more detailed art notes, and I wanted this <laughs> you piece. You were. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, I wanted this piece to illustrate the three worlds of the Umbra and the mage between them. And that's one of Echo's. And uh, it, yep. the art notes for that were fairly sophisticated. And, and well, the, the process involved in it obviously was, ama it was amazingly labor intensive for the artist. And Echo was like, I love this piece and I want to keep <laughs> <laughs> you can see where I started to, I, I do a lot of the negative space between the borders now, and mm -hmm. I still do that nowadays, where there's, there's, uh, you can see the negative, yeah. where it's got these borders that over, that overlay these other borders. And you can, you can see that nowadays, even in my work, how it goes through. Wow. So this is uh, the, 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 um, the location was inspired by a place actually in Prospect Park in Brooklyn that had huh. these big arches on them. So. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to bring that up in PDF. I think. That oh, you have it. Okay, 
That's yeah. even better. I have all the Although PDFs because I'm cool. <laughs> that, this, is, this shows something when we were talking about Daryl Elliott earlier. This shows one of the, the frustrating elements of of the, the beautiful artwork that some people like Daryl Elliott and Echo yeah. would do back in the early 90s because the scanners were not capable of capturing the level of, of subtlety that yeah. those artists did. Because, I mean, in 1994, the scanners were garbage. Uh, and so we had people like Daryl, this just pencil photorealistic. art. Hmm? Doing pencil art, photorealistic. And it, it, we can see it just, it doesn't scan well at all on the PDF. And it, it didn't even scan well in the original editions. There's so, the, the originals are so much, so much richer and so much more beautiful than that. Yeah. That's yeah, primarily why I work in black and white mostly. Like I try to keep it kind of graphic for that for that reason. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, the, the, we were still. I mean, in I mean, '94, I think we were moving into using um, uh, other more sophisticated printing presses. Uh, but at the time, the people, the printers we were working with, which were being used throughout the gaming industry, um, they, you know, they could only do so much. Um, mm -hmm. they were, they were, they were, the the uh, paper was more absorbent um we had we had i don't i don't think anybody any game company was had moved to like really dense or slick paper so that the, the ink would sit on it rather than get absorbed so it mm -hmm. uh, it really did affect stuff and then that zip tone loved to war and make those more patterns oh so. my god yes mm. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, Jeff Holt, who was on staff with White Wolf, he's another example of someone who just does gorgeously subtle work, and yep. a lot of the subtlety got, got gets lost in the scans. What is Zip Tone? Uh, Zip Tone is a film. It's like a um, it's a very thin. <laughs> It's very thin film. Let's see if I have one around here. Oh, well. <laughs> this is a, this is an artifact from doing art by hand. Yeah, this is an artifact. I have some around here somewhere. Where, where'd all my originals go? Somebody bought them all. Where'd they go? Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna show you, but now I, I seem to have lost all my originals. Oh wait, I have I have a little one here. Here we go. So so I don't even know if you can see. We will spotlight you. Sharing. Oh, did you get it? Um. Do I need to stop sharing? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now okay. we're good. This is a little guy. I don't know if you can you can see it because it's little. Focus, focus, focus. Uh, get in there. It's not focusing very well. Not focusing. Well, uh, it, I don't know if you can it, see. What I do is I do the I do the drawing first, and then I what and for the black and white drawing, you can't see it very well on this. Um, and then I lay like this this uh, this zip tone, which is like a film. Um, With a dot in pattern. Between. And it's a dot pattern, it has a bunch of different patterns on it. And then I chip away with it, chip away at it with an X-Acto blade and I scratch it and I chip at it um, until it gets- Paint over it with white. Paint over it. Oh, this one, this one shows it pretty good actually. So let me go back to my screen. Um, share screen, sorry. Is that the same as like screen tone where you just kind of have different textured pattern, patterns? One of the like successors to like Bende dots? There we go. You can see where I yeah. scratched away at it. Okay. And then go. where I can chip away at it at the bottom here and I can lay them over each other. Um, and they have a bunch of different patterns. So, but, um, but, but yeah, idea, it's a traditional medium. Here you can see idea, this one really good. So the idea though was at the time you only had black and white printing. You couldn't do a proper gate grayscale. So to do that, you would need to have some sort of pattern. Is that what that was used for or? Back, way back in the day, yeah. And then when uh, when Echo used it, or or, or artists who used it, uh, once there it was capable of having gray pattern and stuff like that, then we only had to shoot it in black and white. Because if we tried to shoot it with the grayscale, then we get the uh, the the competing patterns of the dots, which would give you that weird. It's called a moire pattern, where you see like sort of a uh, a vibrant uh, you know thing uh, in in amongst the dots. So it was it was actually really great because it saved like um, uh, publishers from having to to go to these grayscale sort of situations. They could just do black and white printing. Um, in fact, I think a lot of early um, b -b 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 riffs books had a lot of a lot of that uh, yeah. a lot of zipatone in it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this one has zipatone, which you can see the lines here, and then this is ink wash back here. Right. Um, and I was actually trying to figure out how uh, Tim Bradstreet did his pieces in Vampire, but I didn't have that that what's it called that paper with with the lines on it where you um, right. Uh, that, 
Duo I shade. Find Is that duo shade? Duo shade. Yeah, I didn't find the duo shade for like a long time. I went to the store and I was like, what does he do his work in? I found the zip tie. I was like, I'll just do it in this. This is close enough. <laughs> I, I have so. a question for Rich. Um, on sure. uh, Mage Sex Second Edition, I noticed that there was a like a uh, like uh, digital art that was uh, added to some of the pages. How did you come across uh, to the other end of the spectrum using uh, more of a, a computer art approach to those in, illustrations? In second edition? Yes. Yeah. yeah uh, um, I'll share my screen. Uh, Matthew, yeah, Matthew um, why am I blanking? I'm blanking on Matthew's last name. Uh, and uh, Shaggy Dixon and... Uh, uh, oh, where, you mean uh, the, uh, the, the, the the funky um, page? Uh, yes. Those yeah. things. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's Shaggy's work there. Yeah. Oh yeah. So that's I mean that's basically stuff that's in Photoshop. Now at this point, um, we were moving into electronic um, files. So mm -hmm. this is the really weird thing. This is how far back we're going. When we did Mage First Edition, um, we did not have the ability to send a disk or a, uh, or a file or anything to the printer, um, what we did is at the time, we were able to output our own films. Uh, but, uh, so we did our own uh, basically prep for the printer and then sent them the films, which they then put into the, put, laid out the proper way into the, for, so the printer presses would work. Uh, by the time we got to this, we were capable of, um, it, we, I think we had this, I think we started by sending removable media to the printers. So like uh, zip disks and uh, basically uh, uh, big blocky things that, uh, that now everything can fit inside of a thumb drive. But at the time they had to be these own, their own drives and things like that. And so they were saved to those things and we hoped that they wouldn't crash and that, uh, when the printer tried to open them up. Uh, it was, it was still pretty experimental pushing things forward. Uh, you can see Shaggy doing some stuff with uh, filters and things like that, but it was, ver it was very early Photoshop. So, yeah. Thank you for answering my question. I'm pretty sure this And if I don't answer first... anybody's question, yeah. just tell me because sometimes I'll say things and I don't know. I think I think this this one here may have been the first computer generated uh, or computer enhanced uh, illustration from one of the White Wolf books. That's 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 uh, Lawrence Snelly's book. Uh, Lawrence Snelly's work. Oh yeah, I remember when he I mean, first we did very, that. I was like, that. "Holy shit!" Well, yeah, and I mean, we were very inspired by Dave McKean, who was who was mm. breaking new breaking new uh, places in the in the Sandman covers and stuff. Here we have uh, Rebecca Gay. Aww. As I mentioned um, earlier, uh, the the thing that got me into Mage was a second edition was this cyborg illustration that uh, was in the back of the book, and it looked like it was computer generated or something like that. That, that was Snelly's work, also. Yeah. Actually, no, I think that was Matt. Um, Rich, what was, what was Matthew's last name? I'm blanking. Which Matt? I, I know uh, seven. The, 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 the one who was uh, the one who was the artist um, was one of our. He, uh, he also did the full pages in Mage Second Edition. Um, uh, like I can see him, but I can't remember his last name. Oh, that's right. I have the art of Mage here, so of course I can't look Dude. him up because they're my last name. <laughs> oh, hold on. So Second Edition. Yeah, it, that's, uh, no burger that's is that's listed. Good. No, no, I wasn't. Uh, did Matt do a fools? Yeah, because uh, he had he did uh, digital versions of the fools uh, that. Um, uh, no, you know, uh, were, were, Kaluta's. Uh, Kaluta's, yeah, because he took he took Kaluta's images and then worked them into Photoshop images. Uh, That's and, right. That's right. So Ash did the cover. I remember working work, working with him and him going, you know, calling me over and says, "What do you think of this?" I'm like, "That's fucking great! I love it." <laughs> How did you approach Kaluta for, with the uh, with the project? Because I remember Kaluta from early on, and I was always a big, huge fan of. of... <laughs> so I'm going to monopolize the time here to tell the story, I guess. Um, so we um, 
we were working on Mage First Edition. Uh, it was what can we do in terms of the art for the full pages? And um, Stu Wick was the was the person who really came up with Mage originally. And he was a huge comic book fan. I was a huge comic book fan. And we were talking about the artists who could do Mage. And the very first one that we talk, both talked about was to try to get Steve Ditko, who had done the original Doctor Strange oh, and, wow. um, and Spider-Man, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And we contacted him, I think – um, about three times we had very abbreviated conversations and it was just, uh, by, by the third time when we talked to him, it was obvious that he was not interested. Um, mm. don't know if it was something in the second conversations <laughs> that, that threw him <laughs> off or what, but, um, I don't think, I don't think he grasped and I don't think he liked the idea of people playing roles. Like, I think the oh. concept of the industry seemed to, seemed to bother him in some way way um and he was always very much a very personal if, if he can't if he can't get his head around it he's not interested sort of artist so i was like well there's nothing we could really do i said you know um i still would like to get like a really you know a, a linear artist somebody who can really you know uh, handle because again I'm talking about black and white art so uh really well and uh so what's you know Stu said, like, so what's your second choice and i said well you know i mean i absolutely love my kaluta i don't know if it, and he's like oh he would be great for this and i was just like if you think so and i'd like to <laughs> kind of, so there i am and i am like you know okay you know i talked to like six artists you know uh sometimes an hour at, when i was art directing but you know it's at least six artists a day and i get kaluta's phone number and i call him up and i'm like i don't know i'm like the worst the goobiest uh, fanboy in the world, my heart's pounding, and he's like, "Hello, this is Michael Kaluta." <laughs> and I'm like, uh, "Mr. Kaluta, sir, <laughs> I'm art director for White Wolf Publishing, and we uh, we make role playing games, and uh, we we were thinking if it would be possible to use your art for one of our projects. We love it so much, and um, and he was he was he's a very he's one of the nicest people in the world, and um. Yeah, I think he may have talked me down from panic. I don't know, but uh, <laughs> but at that at that point, he's. I started to explain what Mage was about, and he got he got it. He got really into it, and he, he really liked the idea of it. So um, so we went and uh, and sent him sent him the stuff, and I kind of expected something that was more like the shadow, but I think that piece, the Euthanatos piece, was actually the first sketch he sent over. Mm -hmm. Um, and when I saw the graphicness of it, I was like, I didn't expect that, but wow, the pattern in the bones, uh, the going from white to black, I was just gorgeous. I was just like, yeah, he's, it it is time for him to go and do it. That's great. Yeah. I have always wondered because I've, I've always been a huge fan of the guys from the studio. Um, Oh yeah. Pluta is a great artist and he's a great guy. He's like, when I, before I became an illustrator, I met him at a local con and he talked yeah. to me for two hours about art and he told me something. I think maybe it's a pr- apropos for, for this crowd. Um, he said there will be out of like a hundred artists, maybe five, you know, a hundred artists that you know now. And I was like maybe 14, um, right. maybe five of them will still be artists, you know, 20 years from now. And he's like, the way to be an artist is to be an artist and just stick with it. And, uh, and never, you know, never give up, always keep drawing, uh, and love what you do. And I hadn't really, at that time, even formulated the idea of being a professional artist. I wanted to be an animator at the time. But just looking at his work and listening, listening to him as he looked through my stuff, very un, non-judgmentally, just really critiquing mm-hmm. the work, encouraged me. So, like, you know, if I ever met him again, I'd thank him because, it's like, and I would never have imagined that in whatever, uh, 15 years' time, I'd have work in the same book with him. Right. You know, that kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was a really great experience. I mean, and, and, and Michael is, uh, you know, he, he's doing multiple projects at once. You know I mean? He's, he's very much the professional. There's a lot of it in the comic book industry that had even like, you know, they'll, they'll call him up on a Friday and say, you got to get this whole thing done for us on Monday, things like that. Uh, so there was, you know, it was, it was an ongoing process to, to, to work the art out with him, but, uh, we were just so thrilled when it came in. Um, and it held together as a sequence of the, the full pages all held together. You know, like it was just, mm-hmm. 
visually and thematically and how he handled everything. So it made for a great um, uh, sort of a through line all the way through the book. Um, so yeah, we just, I, I can't say enough how great it was. And, and enough that I kept going back to Michael for um, when we like <laughs> when we did Mage 20 and could go back and say, you remember those pieces you did 20 years ago? Would you have, 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 would take another run? <laughs> <laughs> so he he did the initial run of 10 that became the cover pieces for the original tradition books right and there was also the william kaluta mage uh thing that was put out was right. there oh my god you have a portfolio, the portfolio. shit i haven't seen that in 20 something years <laughs> there are dorks and I then there are mage one. dorks <laughs> um, <laughs> oddly <laughs> salacious mark was talking about that one yesterday oh yeah that's the <laughs> Jody Blake piece. Yeah. Uh -huh. I, don't this, I don't to this day understand the mixed reviews, but I thought I was, you know, really nailing something there. Uh, I really enjoyed doing that books. You know, I, I enjoyed, you know, creating uh, Jody. And the art direction was pretty straightforward. She, she's, you know, scantily clad on a giant kephalopod. Uh, just really look at the end of friends slash fans. Some people were just not, they weren't there on it. Uh, they're just they say, this isn't properly just piece for you. Um, and uh, I, I didn't see any problem. I mean, it wasn't say R rated. Yeah, as I as I recall, and I mean this is like forever ago, but uh, it, when when uh, when when Lawrence Snelly uh, came in, one of the things he he came in with was the idea of signature characters that there would be right. certain like you know, five, six characters that would carry through and be like branding for the line. And uh, so the, the developers chose a handful of characters to represent the line and then different artists. Uh, and in the, case of, um, in the case of Mage, Alex Sheikman uh, did the illustrations for those characters. One of those characters was Jody Blake. And the idea was that the illustrations which i think are, are later in this um yeah they're under stig here um down on echoes uh, a little, little bit down si once to say sig like sig, sig, Atropos, yeah. sig um, and they they made up a a tear sheet for uh, for those and said this is the character and, and therefore the characters would carry over from book to book and then the illustrators would be given the uh, the signature carriage a character image and then they would draw their um, uh, draw them based on that. And so I think the art note was something like Jody Blake riding a Watcher from the Deep, and the Watcher from the Deep was this Cthulhuid flying octopus thing that Nefandi would ride on. And so that's what Mark drew. <laughs> and then people were right. like, "What the fuck? Why is this chick right. on an octopus?" <laughs> there and there she is. As if she shouldn't be on an octopus. Why not? <laughs> right. Yeah, that's the piece I remember. Yeah, and I was like, "That's intriguing. Let's see if I can do that justice." It looks like yep. a space octopus or something weird, science fiction. Like. There's yeah, disturbing yeah, things in the, uh, out there in, in uh, the deep space and in, on the deep <laughs> opera. Exactly. I couldn't Alex. wait. And... No, okay. <laughs> yeah, Alex, Alex was, was one of the other iconic mage illustrators. I wanted to get him in on this, but couldn't get hold of him in time. Is that Porthos? Uh, the previous one was Porthos. That's Vermoss. Yeah, yeah. He was both 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 Porthos and Vermoss were uh, were two of our signature uh, characters. Yeah, more, was more, was like more tentacles. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Saturos, with these characters, did you like role play them before you made them, or were they uh, Was the inspiration taken from your own characters? Uh, one of them was the one back a few. Um, uh, Jennifer Rollins there was the character that I had come up with for Sam Chup's game. That is Jennifer. And then there's a previous one also uh, mm -hmm. that Alex did. Uh, and originally I, I wasn't going to gender bend, but all three of the cards, because we did a, 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 a tarot thing to, to determine our characters. And all three of the characters were female. I'm like, okay. <laughs> and she was sort of based on a, 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 a old gaming buddy of mine from college uh who introduced me to vampire actually uh and that's kind of that's largely what she actually looked like at the time 
uh, minus all of the tattoos. Uh, and and her actual name is uh, Jennifer Starling, uh, and I, so I named the character Jennifer Rollins, combining Jen's name with Henry Rollins, who is of course an icon of mine. Yeah, uh, mm-hmm. black flag. Yeah, yeah. So that that character actually did role play. Um, the other ones are just out of mine, or in the case of <clears throat> in the case of Dante um, Travis's, or in the case of uh, Jody Blake, uh, James Moore's uh, imaginations. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, because uh, we had, one, I mean, we had uh, at least a first edition's worth of characters that had been just made to pick from when looking to what, who should be SIG, SIG characters. So um, it came, we were able to pick and choose from the characters that you know, came from a lot of different places that we went, oh, that's a really cool one. Yeah, mm. it's interesting. I, I wanted uh, to make one of the characters... Uh, uh, Kathy Ryan's <clears throat> Kathleen Ryan's character Amanda, and Kathleen did not want Amanda to be illustrated. Yeah, uh, she said that she wanted Amanda to be in everybody's imagination. She didn't want to define what Amanda looked like. Uh, that's Atropos. I, I forgot about this. Happy. That's Atropos, uh, who is also the one who's on the Mage, uh, the sec- Mage Second Edition poster. Uh, mm-hmm. Atropos was was role played by an um, uh, old girlfriend of mine, Shadow. Um, back when I first uh, when I first got the mage gig, and uh, that was her character. I had forgotten about Atropos, uh, but she was actually played by someone else as well. And Porthos, who, especially as I've gotten older, I get identified with a lot, uh, was co-created by uh, Steve Brown, uh, Mr. Sabat, uh, and I. He, <laughs> Vermos mm-hmm. was as well. He kind of came up with a name and an idea, and then the the text and the descriptions were. A uh, combination of his writing and my writing, and I just kind of ran with Porthos when we did the Fragile Path. Porthos became one of the what I called the mouthpiece characters for Mage that would you know, like introduce chapters and stuff by going blah 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 blah, and, and so Porthos became kind of the iconic Mage, uh, other than uh, Dante himself. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's again Jim Moore, Jim Moore, who uh, uh, who created uh, the infamous Samuel Hate. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Everybody's like, yeah. Oh yeah, I remember that guy. <laughs> and those vampire players, they, they, they will not shut up about King. It's like King this and King that. <laughs> Yeah, so, uh, Phil, what uh, what was the what was the faction that Sheikman was did with the tarot? Oh, oh thank you for reminding me. That was uh, he did the uh, the traditions. The, he did um, the traditions. Yeah, he did the the suit of uh, oh, why am I uh, pat? No, what's some pattern? Pattern was technology. Pattern dynamism. Was, uh, no, uh, 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 yeah, questing. Thank you. Uh, yeah, he had done the uh, the the, um, he, he, the the traditions. He didn't do. You didn't do uh, the technocracy? No, um, Dan Smith did the technocracy. Oh, you're right. Yeah. And uh, okay. Uh, and Josh Timbrook did the uh, the Greater Arcana. Right. Which Josh? Cool. Talk oh about iconic. Yeah. Wow. There were Josh, Josh, and. Um, that was a friend of mine at the time of uh, <laughs> at, at at the time I was writing that book. That was a a friend of uh, Judy McLaughlin's. Uh, Judy McLaughlin, one of the people who uh, helped basically create our our vision of the technocracy. Uh, this person was an actual um, a geneticist in mm. uh, Alabama. And, uh, hmm? Oh, uh, I mean progenitors. Uh, uh, ge- uh, Never mind. <laughs> yeah, she, she was she was an etherite. She's a son of a well, society of ether. But uh, no, and that that's kind of that that's her. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's like there's inside jokes in a lot of the mage books, especially the early ones. Uh, inside jokes of people we knew, which we we do with 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 permission, of course. Um, yeah. um, but I, uh, I like the the whole turning a vampire into a lawn chair thing. <laughs> oh God, that's let's not even talk about that one. On okay, we will not talk about. There's that. a saga there, but it's not. Oh, that's one of mine. That's one of yours. Yeah. Who does that's that look like? Mark. Hmm. <laughs> <It's> Mark. <laughs> huh? It was a hit mark. See. Oh. <laughs> 
Yeah, Bill. Bill told me he. he I did like, one. Hmm? Go on. But, uh, Mark, Mark, what were you saying? Oh no! I just I did. I seem to remember doing. I did hit Mark. It was like he was attacking uh, an uh, animated pile of garbage. It sounds <laughs> like a sort of thing we would ask for. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he's basically like opening up and there's just this huge pile of garbage and then there's a homeless person's hand that was sort of like vaguely emerging from like he was sleeping on the pile of garbage and it just got animated around him. And uh, you can really see a hand kind of emerging from it as a thing looms up over the guy who's like opening up like a punisher on the uh, on the pile of garbage. Right. I think that was the storyteller's uh, guide because it was like a full page. Oh right. yeah, Ron Spencer, great. It looks like Ron, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, it is. Okay, good. Yeah. Yeah. Other iconic White Wolf um, mainstay and one of the people who just formed the image for the, not just the world of darkness, but like 90s role playing in general. Um, if, if the yeah. guy ever did a bad illustration, I haven't seen it. It's an yeah. amazing uh, ability with pretty much like a lot of the things he does he does in in, in ballpoint pen did not know that wow yeah like i mean i think he does a, a more mixed thing with with as things go on but he started out doing his illustration in ballpoint pen if you look at the early talislanta stuff uh he mm -hmm. and i were on we and i illustrated for those books and i just i was every time i saw what he did it was blown away by this thing mm -hmm. and then um, i talked to him one time i said so you know what what do you use? What materials? You know the whole conversation, and he uh, and he's like, "Well, sometimes, Rich, I just get a ballpoint pen out and start drawing." <laughs> <laughs> Damn it! <man. laughs> <laughs> we were at one point. Bill and I were talking. It was something. I mean, his 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 real thing. Although he did beautiful work for Mage, his real thing was uh, werewolf. And Bill and I mm -hmm. were at one point talking about how Ron Spencer. Could draw a could draw a, a could draw an image with six werewolves and they'd all be wolves and you could tell each one of them not only each one of them apart but you could get like a whole personality mm -hmm. from the physicality of each wolf in that drawing and he's just yeah. phenomenal with that. True, yeah, and visceral too. That was one thing that I was never really that was really never my wheelhouse is doing uh, gore and viscera uh, all that right. much. Um, yeah, uh, and I think, I think you guys obviously picked up on that and wisely uh, sort of kept that kind of stuff away from me. I would have tried to do it, but I, I, it wouldn't have been comfortable for me doing that kind of stuff. Um, it's, I definitely noticed looking at everyone's uh, work over the years that they, they had proclivities. They had, uh, I don't know, specialties, for lack of a better way of putting it, things that yeah. they were really adept at uh, bringing their sensibilities to. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's the kind of marks you make. That's yeah, really what it comes down to. Yeah, and, and the marks. Oh, that's uh, <laughs> the literal yeah, marks. Yeah, the cabal of pure thought. <sighs> that that's one I, of my all-time favorites too. Thanks. That one there. Thanks. Yeah, mm -hmm. I like talking bow as well. Um, I like the sort of graphic image. Um, and uh, the challenge really was to compose. That's the thing about black and white. You should black and white. Um, at least for me. It really forces me to compose like, uh, the design and the full image. Right. Isn't that Mariana Balador? Yeah, Mariana Balador. I heard you all mentioning the uh, the Jim Morrison. That may be my all time favorite. I think that's in this collection too. I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, I know it's the in the book, so it should be in this folder. Uh, but yeah. that's the Jim Morrison one. Is is just like holy fucking shit. Actually, I think I have. The oh yeah, 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 yeah. Thanks. Yeah, it was part of the trip. It was Morrison, uh, sort of like a list out I'll just in the middle, and then Hendrix on the far right. Yeah, your Hendrix was um, great too, and and your Alistair Crowley, and your, uh, mm -hmm. your yeah, that one. Yeah. <laughs> I love Uncle that one. Al. I forgot about that. <laughs> oh, House Thig, isn't that right? That's House. That thing oh, that's, yeah, the, you did the thing. The... Yeah, I love that one too from from uh, Order of Hermes first edition. Oh, there it is. Wow. I think I still have that one. Yeah, that's a House Marinara or Mar Marinata or whatever. That one is uh, mm. Ex Miscellanea because Marianita never made it, never got its own thing. And that's right. Yeah. At the uh, wow. yeah, this um, Bonisages. Uh huh. Uh, 
Now that's a freaking yeah, wizard. Yeah. That's, yeah. <laughs> Eat it, Dumbledore. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah no, uh, don't eat your heart out. Yeah, there, should, there should be the, the Nagoma one. Does that one not open? Uh, it's up up a bit. It's it's not coming up as or the... Uh, yeah, yeah, it doesn't look good. Oh, it's a tiff. It's not opening up differently. Because, I mean, that's... Nago Mark and I were talking about the Nagoma one yesterday, and that that's... I think I'd put that one in my, like, top 10 or top 15 mm -hmm. of all-time ever made illustrations. I, mean, I, I can't, like, say, that's the one, because there's so many great ones. Yeah. The, the one with the but fellow... I do, I do. Oops. Oh, it's the statue. No, I don't want to move it. Oh, oh, it's five artists. Stop. I'm just trying to open it. I know. <laughs> I, I always yell at the screen when I'm doing these things. Oh, yeah. No, I don't want to move it. It's not the, letting me open it off of there. Oh, well. Is so it the. Maybe we can see that later. Is but it the same thing? The Nagoma illustration from M20 or a different one? Uh, from um, Sorcerer's Crusade. Sorcerer's Crusade. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, it's. Yeah, it's not going to open for us. It's being. A yeah, it's it's in the book. I'm I'm looking up. Oh, there it is. And if you can see my screen, let me. I will Ooh. pop it up and do a screen share. Oh um, yeah, because you've got you've got the book on uh, PDF. Uh, That's going to look a hell of a lot better. <laughs> Jackson. Yeah, I was looking at that. I was looking at that pretty boy earlier. Yeah, because the 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 second twentieth uh, anniversary Art of Mage also has artist profiles for people like Echo and and Mark. Oh, cool! Is this the one? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is probably the closest thing to gore I've done. Uh, the uh, the color oh, the Defenders um, from twenty, yeah. Yeah, With that Dennis like, the yeah. Menace smile. Did I do that? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and there's the house yeah, big was... one down in the corner. Yeah. Oh, there's oh, yeah. Morrison. Yeah. Oh yeah. There's. I love the house thing there with that huge keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it was at ninety six, I think ninety seven. I did that one. Yeah, it goes back a little way. I don't think I've ever seen my profile page when you're done. I don't think I've ever uh, seen it. Echo. Let me scroll through. Uh, I think it's done alphabetically, right, by last yeah, names. Yeah. You're the first one. There you go. Oh, oh my gosh. It looks awesome. <laughs> I've never seen it. Oh, wow. Doing? Cool. Beautiful. Beautiful, yeah. Just never seen it, so. And there it is. Nice. I don't have a name. <laughs> uh, you, you get the intro. You get the whole, oh, cool. you get the whole starty bit. Oh, I've never even read this. Yeah. <laughs> I hope it's <laughs> right. I am not a Huguenot. I'll, I'll bring it. I'll bring it by when uh, when we come by later. I'll bring it by. Yeah, I've never seen it. <laughs> so, cool. That was we we had a uh, that's the 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 virtual add up there was Echo's take the 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 art direction was very different and Echo was like no I think it should be more like this and I'm like but they're not going to get it and she's like no they will trust me. She was right. <laughs> right. And uh, the cultist of ecstasy yeah. was Sahagia. based on my uh, now now late girlfriend Coyote. Hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. yep. Echo Echo had based a few of the characters and the traditions on uh, Mage Twenty off of uh, friends of ours. Uh, again, this um, uh, Laz her uh, her husband Lazarus is the Verbena. Uh, Coyote was the cultist of ecstasy. Our friend Haris was the Thanatos. Me... Um, and um, How is it? Uh, Lilith, my friend Lilith was the uh, uh, the Order of Hermes. That's the the ones then the yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was Here's that Laz was Lazarus. That's Lazarus. Oh. Is the so signature the character for? Temple. Is that based on anyone? Uh, the image there is Lilith. Her name is actually uh, Ioka Sophia. Okay. Uh, and she started appearing in uh, uh, Order of Hermes uh, first edition, but I made her a major signature character in the in the, the Mage Thanks, Twenty yes. era. I love I I fucking love that one. The Dream Speaker there. <laughs> the, I fucking yeah. love that. That's also <laughs> one of my all time favorites. That trying to say so. <laughs> We we were talking yesterday about the. Um, 
we were talking yesterday about the the shit fit that that people threw on uh, that that James was mentioning that people threw on 4chan when the PDF oh, dropped. Man. That's one of the images that they were throwing a fit about. Really? New speakers should be nice yeah. and mellow, and that's an angry black man. Uh, <laughs> he's not angry. Does he look angry? He is not angry. He's totally really in the awesome group. reason not to have fortune. The, the lion is yawning. He's, he's maybe tired. He's angry. Look at his face. He is his fur. His brow is not furrows. He's like grooving. He was angry, he'd be like, Whoa, and then he said, He's like, Yeah, you know, he's a black guy with his mouth open, so he must be angry. That's what he's that's not, what they say. There's nothing yeah. angry about his pose. <laughs> oh, like, I, we, yeah, we know <laughs> <laughs> that's why you don't go to 4chan, Phil. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Besides, I don't listen could, to Art Direction very well, and that's all Rich's fault because, like, early in the days of Mage, I like just make something awesome, and now I'm like, people hand me Art Direction, I'm like, you no, 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 you want this? You, can, this is what you, want. <laughs> you cannot offload that to me. <laughs> it's on <all> you. <laughs> just ask the Shadowrun Art Directors because I'm all like, that's not what you want. You want this. This is how we do it in the good ways, in the good old days. <laughs> Back in our time, this is how we did it. We liked it. And we yeah, like it. Yeah, get what you get. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> we did it on hand drawn paper and we liked it. <laughs> Not this oh, computer that's, stuff. This one of the things and I, I got I don't want to make too much of a digression on this, but I think it's like worth mentioning. People don't realize how much work the artists put into these illustrations. Yeah. Like when we were talking earlier about the zip tone and so forth, there's mm -hmm. a real amount, whether it's digital work or whether it's you know, hand drawn or whatever, there's an unreal amount of work that goes into these, uh, e even the really like quote unquote basic images and people slag on the artist or people try to pay the artist less. I was arguing with a, a friend of mine a few days ago about what artists should be paid. And she's like, you know, well, well, go to Asia and get somebody to do it for ten dollars. I'm like, that's a really shitty way to treat the artist. But this, there's an unreal amount of work. Uh, uh, artists should be appreciated for that. And I'll shut up. Zip tone pieces they would take me fifteen, twenty hours. Oh and, yeah. You know. a nice wash there, ink wash. Right? Or is yeah, that? Um, that's Kadelka. Uh, yeah. Yeah. He he started out with line work and then he went into doing wash ink wash and I was like oh my god why not? and he's he doing used, a digital he used, now. I think he's pencil in there too. What is ink? I don't wash? know about Echo, but when I when I would look at the work, you know, when it came out, I'd always be looking, you know, a little bit at my work at the registration, but also you know to see who I was sharing the book with. It's like oh my god, this is you know this is great. I gotta you know I gotta up my game the next one or whatever. Even though I of might course. have some idea of what I want you know, of what I wanted to do, I'd look at other people's work and think, oh, Sheikman, man, he's really, he's really nailing it. Uh, or, you know, Frank Rebecca, she's, you know, she, you know, uh, it was always great to see other people's work and to be, again, with the diversity, to get everyone to sort of, at least in my case, uh, be challenged and inspired by uh, right. you know, the other artists' work. Yeah. I, I, this, this is, this is the Kadaka stuff that I absolutely always loved. I loved his swashes. Like he did, he did some great ink swashes. Yeah. yeah. That's great. Yeah. He's, he's Amazing always, how he's different. Always... All the artists look so different from each other. And nowadays, you know, with digital things, I think have gotten just different. I mean, the artists still, you can tell them apart, but I don't know. They just, these are like distinctive. Yeah. Well, I think I, I'm, I'll be critical. Um, I, I know what you're talking about. I've forgotten that as well, but I, I think people sort of want to consolidate a vision. They want it all to rhyme in a weird kind of way, as opposed to everyone bringing sensibility in, like Rich said earlier, about everyone being able to pick a book in it and say, ah, that's, that's my data. Um, you know, I remember when, uh, oh, what's his name? Guy Davis. When I first saw Guy Davis, his work, uh, and I was like, that's sort of like with other artists, like movies and so on. It's like, I love that work. I don't want to draw like that, right. but that's still the best stuff that I've ever seen for yeah. that. It's like, it's a style that I hadn't seen. And it's like, this is perfect. This is like one area of, of creativity or vision that I didn't know existed. But now that it does, I want to see the rest of everything the way uh, Guy Davis draws, you know, uh, 
Did you guys ever see him? I forgot it is. Did you ever read his comment at the Marquee? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, love that. Um, had the hardest time know, getting all the issues, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was, it was like every once in a while you see some of these work where that style suggests not just oh, this way. I'm trying. This is actually a world that I'm looking at. I'm just, you know, just referring to the right. side, drawing what I see, and I'm sending it to the art director. <laughs> you your know. brain. Yeah. Yeah, and Dave, that's what I Davis, had, Go on. Uh, Dave, uh, Davis had worked on uh, Sorcerer's Crusade, and I wasn't able to get any good scans of his work, so I unfortunately wasn't able to put any uh. of this stuff into the Art of Mage because it just it. I tried; it wouldn't scan. I, but I, I I loved his stuff on Sorcerer's Crusade. Yeah, yeah. this is Jeff Robinson. Yeah, Jeff Lobenstein. Jeff yeah. Lobenstein. Speaking of uh, Shadowrun and uh, right, Fez right. Fez yeah. and and Sorcerer's Crusade because that's when he started working on Mage, and he yep. he and uh, Langdon Foss, who who we looked at earlier, uh, I, I I wrote in the uh, the Art of Mage about how one of the the, the one of the distinctions of one of the, the visual distinctions between the revised era and the second edition era was that a lot of the first and second edition era stuff had been very dark and a lot of the revised era stuff had been like that because mm. the, the art yeah. the arts uh, a lot of the artists changed uh and it was more of a, a clean bright light and art style mm -hmm. in the revised era so yeah and i think you that? i mean again you could you could take that from uh well because larry came out of comic books so oh, he was okay. looking for that that kind of style um, when he was when he was commissioning the, the stuff, and I mean, hey, any opportunity to work, to work with Lavastein, I was, hey, do it, <laughs> get him in there. <laughs> uh, Larry is uh, he was he was really good about finding a wide range of people, but uh, but he did uh, he he did do most of his hunting for new artists in the comic book industry because that was what he knew mm -hmm. was what he was excited about so yeah. but i would i would do anything to get uh jeff's jeff's stuff in our stuff because he's just just amazing yeah yeah questions. were there anybody uh any artists that, were that you uh, really wanted to get but they were either unavailable or you know besides did go uh, yeah <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, I, I'm sure there were. I mean, but they, again, they're not available year one, but they're then available year seven. You know, what I mean, yeah. mm -hmm. you, you do it for so long, you you, you do kind of wind up. Um, I probably, uh, I did finally get to work with Bernie Wrightson uh, on a very limited wow. level uh, on uh, on some stuff. Um, did not manage um, with um, Kevin Jones. Um, didn't um uh did not get to work with barry smith which i would have mm -hmm. loved to have done although probably the experience may have killed me you know <laughs> uh, I, I understand he was he continues to not be uh someone who uh um uh, just goes along to get along so um rich uh how did you get the hailed and brand brand Brothers onto uh, the Sorcerer's Crusade, the, the you know the painted covers, the beautiful ones that mm -hmm. the uh, the for the um, the in, in, inside story. Yes, how did you get uh, in touch with those people? Um, I would. It could have come from a variety of places. Uh, we were working with a couple of uh, art. Um, Ages, agents, uh, one of which was uh, was Art Spiegel and his group, which was where we got uh, George Pratt and um, oh, that uh, the the whole the whole crew that were very very uh, artistic artists at the uh, at the time uh, in comic books, and then um, I think I got the Hildenbrands connect direct connection from Jesper Mirfors. Who, who, when oh. he was in his, in his, uh, oh my God, the magic, the gathering money is just pouring through my house, uh, <laughs> bought, ori bought original Hildenbrand Brothers art. And so um, uh, he had, he had a direct connection. I think that's where I got it. And then, uh, and then just got the connection going. And I think I gave it over then to a lean to do the actual working with them. I think that and, was Aileen, uh, yeah, because I yeah. remember, I don't remember, I, 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 as I recall, it was Aileen who called me in when the paintings came in, 
And yeah. if I recall correctly, they were like paintings, paintings. Oh know? yeah, like that, like that huge Brom piece that that on uh, on uh, yeah on um, you know gessoed um, uh, particle board. Mm -hmm. And Dave Leary's yeah. art. Dave Leary, mm -hmm. yeah. That was, I think, one of the most exciting things was when the art would come in. And especially if it would be like really just fucking amazing stuff, and we would we would like geek out over the over it when it would arrive. But uh, went back a little bit over because they had Leif, yeah. Leif Jones there, um, mm -hmm. who also did. I noticed uh, Leif Jones and, and Brian LeBlanc, who also did mm -hmm. really major stylistic transitions uh, over mm -hmm. the course of their career, as. Like when when Lee first started, he was doing this really moody black and white, you know, really you know, like that. And then he came more Moved and into, more into just that, and that's fucking unreal. I love no. that. He's one of my favorite mage artists too, because just wow. <laughs> mm -hmm. Who did the color piece that before that looked like a gin or something? Like that? that was Dave Leary. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, and that's all. I mean, that is all painted. That is just uh, the. It is in, it is in the same amount of detail. And a lot of times he will work from one corner out. Wow. Interesting. Like just, just so yeah, he'll do, it. But he'll do like that whole front section, but he'll do that whole thing from one. I mean, it's, it's just amazing. Um, saw him at a couple Illux cons, mm -hmm. uh, I think. And he had some paintings up where he's like, you know, this incredibly detailed thing and then white. And then another incredibly detailed thing. He's like, yeah, I'm going to get to the middle section later. <laughs> cool yeah. but his stuff at this point is he takes so long to do the paintings that the you know he, I, I don't i don't even know that he takes commissions anymore he just mm -hmm. um because he, he's like I, I feel awful because i know it's it's going to take me like two years to do this thing oh yeah, he's wow another okay. with the, those black and whites he's another one that the scanners and the printers did not treat his work well at all because the originals are so much so much so more detailed subtle. yeah mm-hmm uh leaf the, the the back earlier with the 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 one with the uh leaf aria and leaf reggae those were two ones that we would that we geeked out over when they came in uh because they were just so perfect very organic <laughs> i love always, that one i always liked yeah his his organic kind of style everything sort of flowed in a uh dare i say psychedelic kind of way mm -hmm. they and also got in there's some beautiful design work you know i mean look at that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Damn, yeah, that's composition, a, that's the design, the the POV, it's great. And his his Hendrix, uh, which I'm not, I don't think his Hendrix is in there, but his Hendrix full oh, page, yeah, yeah, I yeah, think yeah. it's one of the greatest pictures of of Hendrix. And that I've looks ever like Kaluta. Like that, that yeah, looks like later Jones. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the the Hendrix one. Yeah. No, no, right here, the Leaf Jones one of um, the the Life Weaver. The face mm -hmm. looks like Mike Kaluta. Yeah. Oh, it looks like yeah. it looks like Kaluta himself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, he's still just like like that. Let's just design wise. Holy, holy shit! Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I can hear the sitars in this. Yeah, and disturbing without like real real gore too. So mm -hmm. right. Is there a sense to which you have to like uh, cultivate a, a collection or a stable of new artists as time goes on, as people kind of leave the field or retire or their rate just goes out of it? Do you do much scouting to find new talent, Rich, or uh, do they generally come to you? In th these days, there I mean, everybody's coming to us. Uh, back in the day, we would one of the reasons that any of the art people would go to um, any of the conventions was to walk artists alley to, to see portfolios, check things out. We would go to the, the San Diego Comic Con, and uh, and come back with all kinds of samples and cards that we handed out, and just things you know, notes written down. Call this person; they could do X, you know, and. Uh, and now mostly people, you know, send stuff into, into us and um, we just, you know, go through it when we're looking for a new artist to bring onto a project. Does that one page summary of like the art flavor for each line still exist? Is that an artifact that the public can see or is that? Uh... Uh, I definitely don't have it. Okay. Uh, I, I probably have it in a folder somewhere. Uh, I still, I've kept all of my 
printouts and, and memos and stuff from the five years or so that I was on staff. So I, I'm sure I've got it in a folder someplace. Hmm. If, I, if I find it, I can send it, uh, scan it and send it to you, Terry. If it's something that we can share with the world. If not, that's fine too. Uh, um, yeah, it's definitely not something I can, I can produce right now. I mean, it would take oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> a while to find it. I don't even think they're chronological. I, I have notes from most of our meetings, Phil, like all of them, like the X meetings, the whatever meeting it was, I'd, I'd, I'd be there doodling and writing down notes and I, and I saved all of them. Wow. I went back a little bit on uh, Rod, Rod McNeil. Um, Ron McNeil. Ron McNeil? Ron McNeil. Uh, he was one of the first um, first edition into Robert. second edition. Robert, yeah. Um, edition. And just I fucking look at that. Look at that. Holy crap. The, the, the line work on that. And the, the 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 composition, the dynamism, or the or the next one, the cyborg, that's just yeah. Were you saying that the change in art style between second edition and revised was intentional, or was the byproduct of just different artists being emphasized? Moving into a different artist pool, I think um, okay. we we didn't. So the we didn't make any real like, hey, we should make all the art X uh, between editions. Uh, I, I think it was a far more organic thing of moving into different kinds of artists that we were working with as the company continued to grow. And, uh, and like you say, some, some artists we started with, um, we didn't continue to work with for, you know, for a variety of reasons. Um, and, uh, and then we brought other people in and their styles would you know, subtly shift in this direction. So, you know, um, like uh, it's far different. Like when we, when I did Mage the Awakening for the what was then the New World of Darkness, now it's the Chronicles of Darkness. Um, that was a very specific. I want the art to look like it's all linear and drawn to give it more of this tome. You know, somebody's it's a, it's a book where someone has put this art, drawn it in the page, mm. and uh, so you know things that are too technic tech oriented would not fit for that sort of thing. That's also one of the, the one of the most beautiful books White Wolf ever produced, uh, under any uh, ownership or imprint. That the Mage uh, Mage of the Awakening is just gorgeous. Uh, it's a lot of good deep, stuff. Yeah. Steve Prescott, early Steve Prescott. Steve Prescott. <laughs> yeah, that that one's that one's later. That's re, that's from a, a, a revised Cult of Ecstasy. Is it? Oh wow. Yeah, that's uh, the. But that, I always loved that one. Yeah, that's he's somebody else with like like um, um, like Ron Spencer with the physicality and the personality that yeah. his his stuff always is so. And that was talk about the the um, uh, talk about the the moment when the art came in. My introduction to his art was when uh, the comic book for Freak Legion came in, and Rich oh, called me and he's like, "You got to see this." <laughs> And we, it hadn't been lettered yet. It was just the pages, but you could it's tell. It's so everything. intricately gross. <laughs> and we were just, we were laughing so hard we couldn't breathe. And people were like, we're like standing in, in the, the, the lobby and people were like, what is going on? Because we're just like, bah! look at this. Bah! And so I, he's just been one of, one of my favorites ever since. I think he's, he's magnificent. And he's the one we were talking yesterday about the uh, the disparate uh, alliance ones. He's the one who did the uh, the disparates for uh, for Mage Twenty and right. just went so far beyond nailing it that that those are amazing. It was a um, the earlier artwork with this the the sword was beautiful. That with the blues and stuff. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you tip? How was that pronounced? Do you tip? That's how I pronounce it. Do you tip? Okay. No, a wise guy. Do you tip? <laughs> and uh, I'm, I'm checking. I just got a message about that as well. Okay. Uh, it looks like we're good now. Yeah. Some of the some of the me sigils. I noticed a lot of. Uh, Social Crusade stuff going on there, Phil. Yeah, those were gorgeous, and and those were how did you like go major about, collaborate. How those did you go about composing those? The um, um, 
we can pull up either the either the ram head or the one before this yeah um so like there's a bunch of stuff going on phil sends me the info uh, with symbology and all sort of stuff that would be appropriate um there's a background element that is either a triangle pointing down a triangle pointing up uh basically it's earth air fire water that sort of thing um that then each of these things get laid into with the, the major symbology as per and i think like i don't know like i've picked like i don't know maybe seven things here but oh, yeah. phil's notes had you know, i would 40, have 40 <laughs> yeah, I, I would. And I, I did this with with Echo as well. Is I would list a bunch of symbolic elements and say, work with whichever ones of these fit best. Like these are these are elements that symbolically say what I want this illustration or this gra or or this you know, this image to get across. Work with what works best for you. You don't 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 try and integrate them all. Work with whatever works best visually. The flowers. We got the chalice. You know the bells. But did you uh, did you draw them like when you uh, worked on the like the preliminaries the the roughs? Did you already have an idea how the composition would work, or did you sort of like pre associate and just say, "All right, I'm going to put this here and there"? Uh, like, so, like for example, I, go on. No, like like I was saying, I would I, I based these on these sort of like I knew what the background was going to be. Right, so I knew there'd be a triangle pointing in one direction, or there'd be a thing with a line through it, or whatever. And so, in, I needed those to show somehow. Um, mm -hmm. Like in this one, I think you can just see that the, you know, it's got the triangle pointing downward, um, and it kind of goes up a little beyond the in, into the where the wings are. Um, and then I think there's another there was a, there was another thing to do with the shape. And I don't remember exactly what those why the why there's a circle in some instances and other shapes in others, but all that stuff going together. Um, if it was, if in the, in the read of it, if it seemed like a much more uh, controlled group, like, you know, like, you know, like the order of Herbie's has rules, you know, um, right. then I would, I would uh, try to keep the, the imagery much, much more controlled, static, more, uh, you know, uh, like in this one where you can see that the bones are all uh, mirror images of each, of each other, things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, and then with you know, look at the other one with the ram's head where it's there's you know there's not a there's not a need to balance it as much you know you've got mm -hmm. a horn on one side and you've got bells on the other side and they're not they're they're not even trying to echo each other's shape you know because that's the nature of this particular uh, faction so gotcha okay. and the the cult of ecstasy uh, the very power there the logo I'm sorry go on. Go. Oh, I was just saying, but, and, and, and the cult of ecstasy flower, because that's the group that eventually right. became the cult of ecstasy. Right, and, and a lot of a lot of Easter eggs to the to the things that would eventually happen in modern mage, you know. So, um, okay. with and then I, I basically drew out all the different pieces, um, reassembled them in a you know in a in a, in a final drawing, uh, then inked it all and scanned it. So, ah, okay. extremely low tech. But extremely effective. So and I, I and I uh, and I designed them all during a t trip to Disney World with my uh, my wife and, and my one daughter at the time. Um, wow. <laughs> and which what is the example my wife uses to say that you never relax and you never stop working. You're always doing something. You're in Disney World on the balcony of our little hotel, looking out over you know in the morning, and I'm getting them done because I know we got to get these things done to go to press. And if I don't do something, it's not going to happen. So. Right. Mm -hmm. Plus, you know, it was kind of fun. The, the pre you know, pressure was off then. I could, you know. Yeah. Well, I, I, I've always enjoyed them. So I'm glad to hear. Thank you, glad to know now how the, how the, uh, the, pro the, the process goes. Yeah, they were a lot of fun to do. Those particular ones were, were a blast. What do you, you think? Blast? As, <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, what do you think is our character for legacy in terms of popular culture? Because I did not see this kind of stuff in the popular culture before Mage, before Vampire, before Ian the White Wolf in the World of Darkness, I think that its shadow uh, is is long in terms of popular culture. Yeah, well, I mean, like any art, right? I mean, if, if, if 
we're we're influenced by it. We're not necessarily we can't necessarily put our fingers on it, but it it expands the way we think. And if we're visual people, we're always absorbing. It never mm-hmm. stops. <laughs> It'd be nice if yeah. it could stop, please. But you know, you, you you people. I don't know how many people have ever said, "Well, how do you think of doing that?" And it's <laughs> you know, it, it it's because we're constant input. We're constantly processing visual mm-hmm. input and saying, "Okay, well, that would be cool if we." Oh, I could try that or, you know, whatever. Uh, our, our visual vocabulary keeps expanding. I think that's the way it works in, in, in culture in general. Mm-hmm. But I could be wrong. No, no. I mean, people remember words like that. I saw on a uh, sort of describe a sort of moment like confluence of, of uh, aesthetics, sensibilities uh, yeah. sort of come together. And produce uh, sort of amazing stuff. Never tell where where it's going to happen. You know, one generation it might be music, another yep. generation it might be film um, or comics or RPGs, and it just sort of seems like it all sort of came together into a nice uh, sort of bully base, a nice stew of uh, uh, of artists, writers, designers uh, to produce the kind of work that had not been done since before. I don't think. Yeah, I mean, and I think that, that because we were, I mean, the people who were working on on the stuff at White Wolf, at the especially you know in the offices in the studio, um, were such just voracious media hounds. Just you know, I mean, uh, most of us uh, were, were were comic book fans, uh, movie buffs, uh, you know, just everything um, that a video game. I mean, the nascent. Uh, change of video game graphics that was happening then as they became more and more sophisticated all that sort mm-hmm. of stuff um that was just that was just what we all loved and i mean you know phil and i could go off with a, a good half hour 45 minutes talking about something that was showing up in mage that reminded us of something harlan ellison wrote you know and just yeah. you know we were just voracious readers and, and visual people and so it was you know all that step that big pot was being mixed up and uh mm-hmm. You know, uh, it was very much a, a product of its time, and if it if it influenced later times, then cool. You know. Yeah, but I think it was tastefully done too. I mean, it, for all of the variety, for all of the the, the elegance, uh, the horror, and the viscera, uh, there's always been, a, I I think, an impeccable a, a thread of impeccably good taste as to what worked um, and when something worked on how to you know how to uh, cultivate it. I, I wouldn't maybe make that claim myself, but <laughs> like I think maybe that maybe that thread could be awfully thin at times. Um, and, and you know, we were talking about how much we love the Freak Legion thing, but a lot of people absolutely despise the Freak Legion book mm-hmm. because it's so gory and yucky and ma- just nasty. Um, but you know, we thought it was <laughs> particularly Steve's Steve's comic was hilarious. Um, so you know, it's it, it's it's tough to say where. You know where good taste and 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 that sort of stuff uh, lies. We were always interested in pushing past that boundary, so I yeah. think I, I don't know that we had the capability or the interest of pushing incredibly past that boundary. But we liked we liked to see what we could get the hell away with. I think was mostly it. Well, I, I like that because go on. Oh, uh, sorry. I was just saying that that um, with Freak Legion, I remember. I, I, I'm sure Bill, Bill probably talked about this with you as well, Rich. But I know when when we were working on it, Bill said he really wanted that that either EC horror comics, mm-hmm. Warren horror comics, uh, or underground comics vibe to it. That's so that's the way we wrote it, and that's the way it looked. Right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And uh, again, and that's those were those were the references we were working off of. Uh, I don't know, like, I think maybe modern media uh, went way past us. So maybe we would be discussing how Freak Legion should be like uh, Saw and, uh, you know, uh, um, that mm-hmm. sort of that, that sort of material, you know, I, I it's, it's really hard to say, because it was such just a just sort of a time period where that's what we were, you know, we were exploring that stuff. Sure. I went back over. Oh, sorry, because you, you were saying something, Mark, a minute ago. 
Uh, oh, I did want to say one, one thing, if sure. you guys, uh, mm -hmm. just to go back, because um, we were asked and we were, we were talking at the time, but ink wash is when you take black India ink and you water it down and you make gray tones um, and, 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 and paint them in. So, so somebody asked, "What is ink wash?" Because we kept referring to it, and it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's based. That's basically it. But you'll see, any a lot of stuff that's gray tone is ink wash. But there's also pencils. There's also uh, anything that can create a gray versus a strict black and white that you get from from ink. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, were any of the artists come to mind as having more um, out there or novel techniques? I always think of the cover of, of Wraith or Loom of Fate as originally starting from sculptures. Were there any other artists that worked for White Wolf that had uh, very well, there were non non standard methods? Um, yeah, they were they were they were they were sculptures. They were done by Henry Higginbotham, um, who's a, a very nice man who had a lot of room in his uh, farm in Kentucky <laughs> in his barns with all these and he had he just had doll parts and animal skulls and just all kinds of strange stuff and uh, I looked at this he he tried he was trying to get work he's I think it, he took it around maybe Dragon Con and I, and I saw something that he was doing I said huh that be that might be really cool and I think it was Luma Fate was the first one uh, that yeah. we used Henry on and I just was like wow you know what can you do wasn't the Luma Fate, if if I recall correctly, wasn't that on like a a, a door or something that he had he he door like or window a door yeah. in half yeah and had just built it on the on the door or window frame it was enormous and I, yeah. I seem to recall there were problems photographing it because it was so large yeah we I mean you know we had to take it out to a photographic studio and have them try to light it right and everything else like that it was it was you know you couldn't scan it that was for sure uh, and then. Uh, <laughs> And then, and then, yeah, and then I, you know, then we said, you know, can you, I want, I want something that's got all these chains on it and all this other stuff. And he's like, oh, chains, lots of chains. I can do that, Richard. <laughs> uh, and then uh, Wizard Coast stole them away and he did the covers for like, um, what, the uh, D &D. third edition? Third edition yeah, D&D covers. Right. I, did, I, I didn't mm -hmm. realize that was yeah. him. Cool. Yeah. yeah. He also did a bunch of stuff for uh, Planescape and Magic the Gathering. Uh, he was responsible for the for the mirror from the Mirrodin um, mm, okay. saga, and I think he the Modrons as well. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you did some DC stuff. I actually uh, a few Henry. Uh, yeah, uh, there was a so back in the nineties. Uh, mm. It was they had a bunch of different artists do the villains from the DC universe, and I seem to remember him being in. Uh, oh, okay. In, cool. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. so, if I can steal the screen for a moment, uh, Higginbotham's list actually includes a few White Wolf pieces that I I don't know that I have ever actually seen used in White Wolf. I mean, my knowledge is an encyclopedic, but Luma Fate is right. is, is, is straightforward, um, as is the uh, the Wraith cover. I don't know if this is sharing, but the uh, Von yeah. Beck cover spread. Mm -hmm. The where was the blunderbuss used? It's in, in one, in of one, the, the, one of the, huh? the Moorcock books. And one of the pardon? It, it, was, it was also used in um, uh, Sorcerer's Crusade, one of the, the gatefolds between mm, book right. one, book two, and book three. But that was one of those, and that that one is as well. We had problems photographing them, mm. or he had, because yep. I think that's in his uh, in his, his um, uh, garage uh, studio. But we couldn't we're having the hardest time I, if, if i recall correctly it was aileen no it was kathy who was laying those out and she was having a, a hard yeah. time getting them because the photographs they were such huge pieces and the photographs were you know not not really that great because the the depth of field and the lighting and so forth um had such, yeah he, had would, he, he, he would send them the, the the photographs but they were the photographs that were um on you know they're basically on film they were the i forget what they're called but uh, so the, you know you could hold them up to the light and see them better and things like that and so he would send them those us to them because the printers could use those as well so we had to kind of indicate where they would go and it was really hard for our guys to to know exactly where everything went again a CD lot print? easier uh thank you yes that's that's the term um and it was it was it's just a lot easier for us nowadays uh you know when everything we can scan everything in and then play around with it 
Yeah, yeah, it'd be like the the equivalent would basically be if somebody sent you a a, a, a sixty DPI image and, and wanted you to blow it up to into a cover. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I think I think he also did the um, he, I think he did all the or almost all the Eternal Champion backgrounds for the when we reprinted the Michael Moorcock series for the, our fiction awesome. group. Mm. Awesome, big Moorcock fan here. So. Oh yeah. Another huge influence. <laughs> Let's see. You got a note from Tom. Oh, there was something. This this came up yesterday, Rich. And I, I don't want to leave like Josh and uh, Jeff and so forth out when we're talking about people. But uh, this came up yesterday. The co the 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 first edition screen. Yeah. What what was the process behind? Well, uh, Terry, I seem to remember sure. you were the one who asked the question. Let me uh, go grab the screen. You want to know how he came <laughs> up with the. A little the rat yeah. uh, gangster with machine gun. Yeah, just because because Terry Terry held up the screen. He's like, "What the hell is the story behind this?" I'm like, "That's a rich question. I don't know. That was <laughs> that was done before my time." Because we were talking about the ways in which uh, the vision of mage shifted, and we're like, "Yeah, it kind of shifted." <laughs> well, I mean, you remember hearing about the 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 issues with uh, with the the initial. Uh, mage as it was as it was first presented was very philosophical mm -hmm. was, we, uh, we, we talked about that for a while yesterday at bill and um yeah. bill and travis uh, were talking about the the way the all hands on deck uh meeting that produced uh, the the mage first edition yeah That's and so are. okay i was gonna say so from that you know we needed to have we needed to get art uh, i think that was also used in the brochure that advertised me. So, you know, it was, it was, we were picking it up, then we put it on the screen. Uh, so mage is being, re is, is being modified and, and tweaked and we have to get art for it. And so I sat down with Mark and I said, well, what, what do you want to illustrate? What do you want to show that's going on here? And I think it was a reaction to, to taking it as far from the philosophical underpinnings as possible and getting into anything can happen it's, it's wild um started throwing out all these ideas and i i will tell you that those are the most coherent of the ideas that are illustrated there. <laughs> it could be communicated to an illustrator as mark came up with all these different things that could be happening in Mage. oh my god it was mark who dictated that <laughs> yeah, nah, it, I, 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 it was mark and josh and i mean you know it was basically you know us trying to piece it piece it together and some stuff uh, and like i think knowing we were going because I, I i knew what the cover was going to look like um because that purple fabric uh, is my daughter's dress that she wore as uh, the flower girl at my wedding. Aww. So yeah. I knew I was putting that on the cover um, because I also knew we were going to do a foil for the, that would be our special effect for this one. We did the, the die cut through werewolf and I knew it was going to do a foil stamp and we had, we hadn't been able to afford that. So this is, this was a big deal, but I wanted the gold to play off of the purple and it was very appropriate for how the, the, the colors seem to work out well for mage. If vampire was, you know, uh, the, the green marble werewolf was the, the bluish orangey rush rust, then this would be golden purple for the mages. And so boom, how do we tie that in? And we decided that that was the color of the deep umbra. It's this, hmm. And the artist ran with that. And you notice it's like folded together, kind of purple background of the whole thing. Um, so, uh, so yeah, and so it's a series of little vignettes that we try to turn into an actual scene um, based on what can you do with this? Well, you can do this crazy thing. You know, you can <laughs> sail this ship in the Umbra. Um, uh, William O'Connor did that um, one? About no. like, oh, I'm sorry. Richard, no, no, you're fine. Were Werewolf, um, second edition, who came up with the idea of the cover being like torn by, you know, I guess if a werewolf slashed it. I think I, t I think, did we do this. At, I think I did this at a, for another podcast, but um, never hurts to tell the story again. So we would go to the comic book store every 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 week. We go out to lunch, and then we go out to the comic book store when the comics came in. Me and Stuart, Josh Timbrook, and whoever else would come along for that particular trip. And at the time, there were 
the comic book industry was starting to turn into the the uh, collectible covers. Like, so, you know, they put out one comic, but it would have five different covers. And, you know, so if you were a collector, you had to buy all five and you put them in your double plastic bags and everything. And standing there, and we were talking about what can we do with where if we knew about the texture, we already had gotten the rust piece of metal with all this rust on it. We'd already gotten the photograph, but it wasn't enough. And what was the cool thing we could do with it? And I'm paging through the current comics and I pull up an issue of Wolverine. And on it, they had die cut Wolverine's claws coming through the, the thing and from the illustration. And there was a slash through it. And I picked it up and I turned it to Stuart and I said, werewolf cover. And he's like, can we do that? I'm like, I'm going to go talk to the printer and find out. So, uh, so in fact, they could do die cuts uh, through the regular material, and, and we did, and then we put die cuts on everything, which yeah, probably wasn't the best idea. And then, um, and by the time we were going to do the uh, the next edition, no one could figure out how to do die cuts through the uh, hardcover because we were doing all second editions of our hardcovers. Couldn't no one could none of the printers we knew could do it, and I finally wound up with a printer in Canada who knew a person who did. Uh, a company that did uh, they they had presses so strong because they made boot they, they cut out the shapes of boots with these presses and they slammed them down uh, to cut through the leather and they said we can do your books for you we can cut we can put die cuts through by using these presses and that's how we got into the uh, into the uh, the second edition wow second edition werewolf book was r remarkably I, I, I think it was the, the, the most resilient game book ever published at that point. I remember, <laughs> I think it was Mike Cheney who has been the, the, direct, the art director for, uh, for most of the Mage 20 books, other than Mage 20 oh, yeah. itself, uh, was working in the warehouse at that point. And he, he took a copy, a damaged copy of, of Werewolf 2nd Edition when it first came out. He's like, look at this, man. Look how tough this book is. And he throws it up in the air. And the warehouse ceiling was, uh, was like uh, 20 feet or something. Two, like that. two levels, cool. yeah. And the he goes wing it wings it up to the ceiling. It comes down on the concrete floor, and it barely dents the cover. And he's like, "Look at that! This shit isn't <laughs> ever going to fall apart." <laughs> yeah, this is, um, and 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 again, I, you know, that was a that was a, a huge experiment. It was really, really awesome. Only beaten by finally doing Werewolf Twenty with the actual rusty metal cover that we put the, the cuts through for that one. Wow. The heavy metal edition. Yes. <laughs> when did White Wolf kind of up their printing game? Like I remember getting the, the Scion books um, and those seemingly having better paper and having uh, more interesting covers with, with some charts being shiny and some parts being matte and so on. Uh, I, I remember that happened for some of the exalted things. W was that tied mm -hmm. with a time or a line or a technology or when was that shift made? I, I think all of the above. Uh, it, it was also the time uh, of, of what was possible we would very often come up with something we'd seen done elsewhere and ask a printer if they could do it. And it was also what printers we were using. We popped around printers whenever we needed to, um, both on a, a, both on an economic level. And also um, if we had worked with a printer who did a, a serious number of mistakes, uh, we were, would start looking pretty fast for a replacement. And, uh, and so it was a, it, we, we sometimes would go to a printer and they go, we only have this kind of paper. And we go, well, okay, that works. And we get a different paper stock. Hmm. The, uh, the fragile path was one of the, uh, the, the experimental <laughs> examples where, where, where Rich was like, you know, what do you think about this idea of doing the different stories? Because it came up, came up with the idea of the, the whole Rashomon different perspectives thing. And he said, what about different paper stocks? I'm like, that's awesome. Go with that. And the, you, you, the print on demands now obviously don't have them, but the original editions and the original right. print runs of the Fragile Path had that uh, embossed the Doisetep icon that uh, was shown earlier. Uh, and, do, you, do, you, uh, do you have a red version? I'm not sure. Let's go check. Speak. This is this is. I thought you were going. This is where printer where we talk about printer errors. Um, the original Fragile Path, I specified a purple cover stock. Um, natural cover stuff and uh, when they came into the warehouse 
Show them all. Nobody had the Chron the Chronicle of the Black Labyrinth. Oh, that was that's a that's a totally different stock. Yeah, this yeah, was, was red instead of purple. I think I have a red one. Yeah, I think I I, do. I, I, I know we we because we, 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 we got a bunch <laughs> like that's what they sent <laughs> us, um, and then we shipped most of them back and said, you know, you've got to redo these. And they said, what? I said, look at. I, to this right. day, the the printer rep is still. He can still quote me verbatim. He said, "I had to keep holding my phone further and further from my ear as you get louder <laughs> and louder, explaining how how we had completely screwed up your dream project." I said, yes. <laughs> if I, I I might have one in the living room. I'm not sure. It's not yeah. in here. The, na sure the name them. of the, the yeah. name of the color stock. There you go. Oh, there we go. There's yeah. the room. name of the color stock was eggplant. It was an eggplant. Was the color the purple color? And I just remember screaming into the phone, does that look like an eggplant to you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and unfortunately, the, the ink rubbed right off. Uh, that's why, like, yeah. they went, Terry, you hold that up again? Sure. Uh, did they use the wrong stock, or was it just badly named? <laughs> or did somebody no, not no, know they, what so they, they uh, for whatever reason, bought red instead of purple. That was it. I mean, they just... they. Their, their company had a brain fart. Um, Are there purple copies running around? Was there a second printing of it? Yeah, or? There, was, oh, there was a second printing yep. with purple copies. And unfortunately, the, the ink quality, the foil ink quality on it, right. it the mm. image completely and the cover completely disappeared. I know I have a purple one. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's so what we did is we, we just basically demanded that, they, that they, they do them in purple. And we didn't really, we didn't sell the red ones. We just, uh, we just kept a bunch and people got their hands on them and, and we traded them and you know, gave them away and things. It's an oddity. Well, we've been talking for, uh, I guess, two hours at this point. I, I do have one or two closing remarks. Is there any, uh, any final pieces that any of the artists or panelists would like to share uh, before winding down or any, any stories that stick in your mind about uh, developing the art or style of, of Mage? Um, can I go first? Uh, as a player, I enjoyed your games and I enjoyed your art and I've run you games and cons and thank you for uh, making one of my favorite games. It, it's been, a, uh, I don't know, this has been a surreal experience, but I, I like <laughs> talking to all of you about Mage and hope to run this in uh, Gen Con if it's so possible next year. So thank, thank you. Well, thank you for, thank you, for doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Cheers, man. Yeah. yeah thank you. And uh, Thomas um, should, should mention the uh, charity again. Yep. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I've got a purple around someplace, but I don't know where it is. Probably. Now I need to track down a purple copy. Great. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, I, I uh, remember the Black Labyrinth one. That was, I'm such a fan of that book. And also the fi Fragile Path. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I guess end with that. If, if any of the artists would like to share where their work is currently, that will, will include everything in the show notes. Additionally, if you do grab uh, the Art of Mage 20th anniversary, it does also include hyperlinks in all of the, uh, the PDFs, which thank goodness for modernity there. If, if you're mm -hmm. not able to, to make out something or, or if you forget the, uh, the X and the, uh, the hyphen in, in, in Echo's uh, <laughs> domain. <laughs> do you want to start, Mark? Sure. Uh, look for me uh, at uh, Stone Age Robot on Facebook, on Lala Pazuzu. It's like Lala Palooza, except instead of Palooza, it's Pazuzu, as in the demon Pazuzu. Uh, Kimota.com, K-I-M-O-T-A.com. Uh, look for the pinup book. Oh, froze. H-A-I-A on Amazon. Uh, pinup of uh, fantasy art, fantasy women. Um, and uh, that's it. Over to you, Echo. Oh, uh, you can find my work at echochernik.com, E-C-H-O-C-H-E-R-N-I-K.com. Uh, if you go, I'm going to share my screen since I've been doing that all night here. Uh, if you go to buy echochernik.com and you scroll down, you'll end up with the, the mage pieces here if you wanted to check those out. Um, and also my Patreon is patreon.com slash the Excalibur project, T-H-E-X-C-A-L-I-B-E-R project, that, uh, ex, just the Excalibur project. Um, and hopefully we'll have conventions again soon so you can see yeah. in person. So bring your mage yes. books by and I'll be glad to sign anything. <laughs> I, 
I, I was looking back through the list of conventions I had hit and realized that at some point I have walked by you at least twice, like in, in terms of conventions and artist alleys and such. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> Terry, I've just, Terry, I've just been corre uh, corrected. Uh, look for Phantasmagoric on Amazon. Uh, I said Fantasia, that's the name of the book, but if you look, okay. up, go to Amazon, oh, yeah, Phantasmagoric. Mm, okay. Okay. Rich, do you still do anything? Do you still uh, do you, uh, have a... Anything at all? No, I'm completely... Yeah. <laughs> do you have any uh, artistic work that you still share with the... Uh, oh, it's the weird. I can't even get a... Yeah. Um, <laughs> I th I'm actually currently working on a bunch of new Pantheon symbols for uh, Scion Demigod. Uh, so that'll show up in, the, in that book for, uh, by uh, or published by the Onyx Path. Um, and that's where you can you can see and communicate with me at www.theonyxpath.com and uh, my uh, Monday meeting notes blog, a uh, weekly little conversation with uh, with our community uh, has a comment section. So if anybody wants to chat there, that's a that's a great place to do it since I check it out every week. Uh, but other than that, um, yeah, projects here and there. Yeah. <laughs> And if you'd like a surreal experience, you can watch Rich having played during Onyx Path Con, which was a, a weird colliding of worlds. It was fantastic. It was a lot of fun to play. I, I played a, day, a game a day, and I have to say that I can't remember the last time that I played a, a role-playing oh. game. Is, is the Rich Rich with the Silver Bell still available on Redbubble, or was that a, a short-time thing? I don't, you'd have to ask Ian. I don't I mean, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but you got to see me dance uh, at yeah. <laughs> uh, PAX, right? So, yeah, I did. Uh, I did. I, got, <laughs> I got to hear an original version. Um, and uh, Satoros and James, do you want to uh, share where we can find you? <laughs> James says no. Okay. Um, <laughs> this panel's not for me. I was just here to host the meeting. <laughs> hey. Thanks, James. Thank you. James. Thank thank you. you James. Yeah, thanks, thanks for, your, uh, thanks thank for you the Zoom much. account. You're awesome. <laughs> the thing that made it all possible. <laughs> yeah, he is okay. We could not have done this without you. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And I've, oh, sorry, go ahead. Thanks, thanks uh, Phil, for bringing all these people together for this convention. It, it, it's yeah. awesome that it came through. It was, um, I think that even though this is the first year and everything that went wrong did go wrong, I think that it's a success. I, I really think that we've done, we've done something, all of us the fans. I agree. Yeah. I agreed. I, I agree. And thank you, thank you, Thomas, for having the idea because th this whole thing originated because Thomas had posted on the Mage Facebook group, I think about two months ago, hey, wouldn't it be neat if somebody did this? And I was like, if you do this, I I'm in, and then uh, uh, like if you build a hundred or hundred fifty people <laughs> said like do it, do it, do it. So, um, uh, I mean, and, and you did, and uh, one of the things I mean, thank you for that because this has been one of the things that yeah. came out of yesterday's uh, roundtable was because there were so many people, rich included, who we wanted to have involved, and just be, because of time conflicts and technology and so forth, couldn't be part of it. Yesterday is we're like we want to do this again and have the people who were not able to make it uh, last mm -hmm. time and maybe some of the people who did, yeah. um, and and just because some of us listen, some of us have never met. Uh, and some of us haven't seen each other in 20 years. And yeah. so it was really great to get together with everybody yesterday. Yeah. And we want to do it more. <laughs> Definitely. And I, oh. I would love to have you guys again in uh, 2021. 20, uh, yeah. And it's, I mean, it's perfectly appropriate for a mage convention to be run in the digital web. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> Absolutely. A digital, a virtual adept now. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> okay. uh, and if no one has any more comments, I think I'm going to stop recording and thank everyone for your time. You don't have to go home, uh, but <laughs> nothing oh, okay. from here will be recorded. Let me sign them off, okay? All right. Okay. Thank you, everybody, for... Uh,